Alright, what's going on everybody? Culture Dog Sam Hatch back with video number two. We're talking about laser disc audio here. And in the last video I kind of gave a big rambling overview of what was going on with the audio that was on laser disc back from when it started in the late 70s until it finally dwindled down in the early 2000s. And it was pretty amazing. Yeah, some of the later Japanese releases I have uh, have Dolby Digital EX, which uses matrix encoding to add a bonus sixth audio channel, <laughs> um, or seventh if you have a you know a subwoofer and you count that as point one, whatever. But um, it, yeah, you had a center surround channel, so it was amazing like how far LD audio came from when it was first released. So say you want to check out something in stereo. Yeah, if you have an analog player, just hook up the audio outs. <laughs> and uh, hope that your disc has analog audio on it. If you have a digital age player, you could either do the same, it's gonna have those same two RCA analog outputs and listen to your stereo and enjoy the heck out of it. Or if you have a player with a Toslink optical digital out, you could use that to pump the PCM CD quality sound from your player to a processor, um, like a pre-pro or an AVR something else that might handle the signal a little bit better than your player would. So you have a couple options there. It gets a little more confusing with surround sound. Like I mentioned in the last video, uh, surround sound you know, was something that had, um, with the advent of Dolby Stereo, become a, a much bigger thing, and especially after the popularity of films like Star Wars, uh, it, you know, starting in the mid-70s, Dolby started adding this to films like 35 millimeter films, which was pretty cool. And, you know, gave 35 millimeter films the, the ability to compete with 70 millimeter films and, and just brought a whole new avenue of surround sound. Uh, so some of those early analog only DiscoVision discs just had the stereo from the film prints, like, you know, just dumped directly onto them. So they would have that surround sound information in there. Um, but the, the decoders didn't hit the market really until the early 80s. And later, those early Dolby surround decoders became outdated as Dolby rolled out ProLogic gear in 1987, which was the next level of surround decoding that would take these stereo signals. I mentioned it before briefly in the last video, but basically it's amazing. It's just you just have a left and right channel and the all the other information is encoded into that cleverly so when you get a prologic decoder it would sense anything that was equal in both channels and then it would just take that and send it to a center channel in between and then it would drop it a few db you know to have it be equal amongst all channels so there you go so you got a center channel so dialogue things like that it's sensing that it's in both channels and that cleverly says, oh, I'm going to take that and put it in the center. Then anything that's out of phase, <laughs> so it sounds, you know, it's not in phase with the main material, uh, is going to be taken and brought to the back. And Dolby Surround just had one surround sound channel, but it would put it to two speakers and it would add delay and some speaker manufacturers would uh, have you know dipole speakers and bipole speakers there was all sorts of different ways the ways you mounted it to disguise the fact that it was just a mono signal behind you um, so you had stereo up front a center channel for dialogue and it would take any low frequencies from wherever and just drop it to the subwoofer so you could have a subwoofer and the surround channels, not only were they mono, but they were a little limited in bandwidth. So they weren't like all the way to, you know, the deepest lows to the highest highs. It was a, a limited section of that. So while you could still have a surround sound home theater that would look identical to 5.1 home theater, um, it was different in terms of dynamics, in terms of bandwidth and, and, and things like that. But it was pretty damn creative. Um, so yeah, that was called Matrix Surround Sound, and it just used a stereo signal. Dolby were not the only people in the business that did that. There were a number of other competitors doing similar things. I even had a Chase decoder, because you could add, you know, add-on decoders. Um, so Chase had their own kind of Matrix Surround 
format. I had a special decoder they had. They, they even manufactured some under Paramount's banner for a while there. Um, so yeah, if you didn't have a Dolby for Logic decoder in your receiver or a separate standalone one, you could buy some from some competitors. Most people didn't. It was mostly Pro Logic in terms of hardware. But in terms of software, like Ultra Stereo were a competitor. Uh, and you'll see those logos when you're watching films. And this leads to one of the biggest problems is um, DTS also had their own version of Matrix Round Sound Stereo. They just called it DTS Stereo. It had a logo, like a little light can with the DTS logo and stereo on there. And it confuses the hell out of Laserdisc fans because there's a number of films like Tank Girl, say, uh, from MGM that have the DTS Stereo logo on there. And people are expecting a DTS coherent acoustics signal uh, to be decoded by the receiver. They're like, oh, it's got a DTS signal on there. Nope, it's just a regular PCM signal, just like Dolby is. And don't expect your receiver to see it as anything else. Um, so yeah, so that there's a lot of stuff going on on the covers of LaserDisc that confuse the hell out of everybody in terms of terminology, etc. But uh, <laughs> we got plenty more videos to hash that out in the future. Um, but yeah, so it was a fascinating kind of little way of bringing a surround sound experience to life through stereo. And then, you know, they were able to do that with VHS because you just analog audio. That's all you needed, analog stereo. Um, analog audio on lasers we had CX noise reduction, which they introduced first with these little standalone uh, devices. Later, around the same time CD audio got added to Laserdisc, the players started featuring automatic sensing CX when you played analog audio. They would just, you know, kick it on for you without you having to get up off your button, hit a button. So the analog audio sounded pretty darn good, actually. You could listen to, you know, a movie that dropped in 1994 or whatever on your old-ass player from the early 80s and uh, then hook it up through those stereo uh, outputs uh, to a receiver that had Dolby Pro Logic and enjoy all that surround sound goodness. Later on, Dolby did revamp the system a little bit with Dolby Pro Logic 2, which was able to steer the surrounds a little bit more to make it give a, a fake you know, stereo surround um, vibe. And then later they added on Dolby Pro Logic 2X, which had like you know center channels behind you. So it's pretty amazing what they've been able to do with that format. Um, so yeah, so if you want to listen to things in surround sound, you're not worried about AC3, you're not worried about DTS, any of that stuff. You just want Pro Logic. All you need is a player with, uh, and if we're talking digital, just a player with either those little two analog audio outs and let the player convert it to analog, or a toss link optical out. Later, I mentioned in the last video that they had coaxial digital outputs, but I don't remember seeing those until much later on in, in the game. So if you have an older player, it's probably just going to be a toss link optical out, um, fiber optic cable. And if you have a compatible receiver, just plug it in directly. Um, you know, plug it in through those uh, analog jacks and your receiver will just set it up to do Pro Logic and it'll decode that and send everything to the right speakers. Uh, same thing if you have an optical cable. Just get that optical cable, plug it in directly if your receiver has an optical cable, and uh, it'll uh, do the same thing. It'll kind of pick up on the flags, it'll pick up on the signal, and start decoding things properly. Obviously, you still had to set speaker levels and do all that annoying stuff, just like you have to do with a modern 5.1 and beyond system. Uh, but the cool thing about ProLogic was that once you enacted it, depending on the receiver, usually it was a, a set and forget type situation where if you put ProLogic on video one, every time you fire that up, it had ProLogic already enabled on it. So it wasn't like you had to constantly think about it. On my Rotel receivers, I just kind of set it for each channel. And then, you know, if I want to override it and put it back to two channel for some reason, like I'm playing a music video, I can do that. Otherwise, it's just always defaulting to ProLogic. So it's super easy to use. If you have an older receiver that doesn't have all that stuff, you may have an outboard decoder or you might, you know, have it just like a processor versus an integrated AV amp or whatever. But all you need is that little ProLogic logo on there to get you going. And that said, if, if you really want to dig into it, you can get some of the competitors out there, like that Chase Surround Sound System I had. And I know there was a few others. And there was a couple like, I think SRS had one that had more like, you know, kind of virtual surrounds and all that sort of stuff. But uh, straight up 
matrix around sound is pretty easy to do and it, it was in a ton of receivers um, so even if you have a modern receiver it's going to have some version of dolby pro logic for the most part um, yeah i don't think i've encountered the one that doesn't have that in there in quite some time so the world is your oyster because that means you can choose from tons of different awesome brands and get them super cheap because on you know craigslist or what you know kijiji or whatever equivalent you have there's got to be metric butt tons of ProLogic receivers out there um, for next to nothing. And then all you need to do is get some speakers. You need to get your, your main two speakers, a center channel speaker, a couple surround sound speakers, and um, a subwoofer. And yeah, I mentioned dipoles. That was like a hot thing in, in the days of ProLogic where you would have uh, speakers that fired front and back. And instead of putting them behind you, you would put them to the sides of you so like if you're sitting on a couch you'd have speakers at either end of the couch firing front and back and that would diffuse the sound a little bit bounce it around the walls etc i've always just hung my speakers up high uh, you could also hang your speakers up high and aim them directly at each other instead of at your listening spot uh, that was always my kind of go-to setup uh, it was just uh put them up pretty high like seven feet or so you know if i could behind me and then aimed at each other and that always made a pretty nice surround field. And if you had a movie with, um, you know, very centered imaging in the surrounds, um, you know, like later on when I was dabbling in 5.1, uh, things like Logan's Run, some of the surround effects and everything, would they'll image, they'll sound like directly behind you if you're rocking 5.1 with those, you know, speakers just even aimed at each other. So I was always impressed with the, the ability to have a phantom center behind you. Um, so that's all you need for for the pro, pro logic is you need um, just stereo outs, uh, either analog or uh, you just have a toss link optical out and let the receiver do all the work. So it's really not that crazy. Uh, it'll get a little bit more complicated in the next video. We're going to hash into AC3 5.1 Dolby Digital next. So thanks for hanging out.